News Scribe 11 closed captioning for the hearing impaired is funded by Carlson Companies. Enjoy a weekend adventure at Radisson Hotels International, winner of the Five Medallion Award for Excellence. The other guys do a pretty good chicken impression, but in fact their chicken is often chopped, pressed, even rearranged. At Hardy's, our chicken is real chicken. Our chicken sandwich starts with whole chicken breast. That's because we never forget, you can always go someplace else. So come into Hardy's while the other guys try to figure out just what real chicken is. Hello, doggy. Now enjoy our chicken filet sandwich, choice of large fries or a side salad for only $2.49 at Hardy's. Where will you find out exactly how I felt about the game against the 49ers? The Wade Wilson Show, today at 6.30, only on TV 11, the Super Bowl station. Diet Coke presents famous Viking conquests. <laughs> Nothing tackles a Viking-sized thirst like Diet Coke. The real cola taste you can drink more of, because it's just one calorie. It's the taste that quenches a Viking's thirst. Just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. The list of great mothers in history includes such famous names as Mother Goose, Whistler's Mother, Mother Teresa, the Queen Mother, and now two moms from the 80s, Kate and Allie. Is there room in here for plain old mother? Kate and Allie, weekdays at 4 on TV 11. If you can't watch News 11 at 5, listen to the radio simulcast Monday through Friday on the original WWTC 1280. is being brought to you in part by your local Hyundai dealer and by Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. And by Martha's Vineyard in the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, Highway 12 and County Road 18. And by your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Now live from Joe Sensor's Grill and Bar, here is Care 11's Jeff Passel. We are live at Joe Sensors in Roseville for another edition of the Wade Wilson Show, a special Tuesday night edition. And on tonight's show, we're going to go over that game at San Francisco as well as looking at what's ahead for the Vikings and joining us on the Wade Wilson Show. Who else but Wade Wilson? You've had a couple of days to think about that San Fran uh, disaster, I guess you yeah. could call it. Uh, that's about the best way you could put that one. It was not the Vikings' day. No, it really wasn't. We played pretty poorly, but we got defeated on all, on all counts of the game. Uh, I think that San Francisco was definitely very well prepared for us and did an outstanding job of playing the game. Jerry Burns mentioned in our 6 o'clock newscast that things happen early in the game, at least he believes, that determine the outcome of the game. And I can't help but think that situation with you where they made a couple of penalty calls on you and the 49ers were getting to you early, it really made the big difference. I think so. I think the critical uh, play of the game might have been early when we, we went down and scored a field goal. We come back and we're driving the second time. I get an in-the-grasp call, which I didn't agree with, and Rick Finney catches the screen pass and gets the first down afterwards. If we go down and score there 10 to nothing, uh, it might have been a different ball game. But uh, we had other opportunities, so we can't make excuses on that one call. Only because it was making headlines today. We have to ask you about this trip home. You were on the plane home. We stayed out there and did our reports from San Francisco and then took the red eye home, so we didn't fly with the team this time, which is kind of unusual. But the trip home, Mike Lynn, a little upset about uh, the conduct of some of the players on the flight, saying that they weren't as upset and didn't seem as concerned with the loss as he thought they might and should have been. Well, I can understand his uh, point of view, but there's 50 different individual players out there. Some guys are very quiet. Some guys deal with disappointment and frustration in a different manner. They go ahead and play cards and, and visit or do whatever they want to do. So uh, I don't think that anybody uh, didn't prepare hard or play hard and just people deal with the disappointment in a lot of different ways. Let's get back to what happened on the field a little bit. Six sacks out there. The offensive line having a tough day. You weren't given much time. The 49ers really were all over you. Yeah, they were, in, but the six sacks aren't always a reflection of, of what the offensive line is doing. Uh, it could be good coverage in the secondary, slow reads on my part, and you have to give them a lot of credit for, for uh, you know, putting a good rush on us. So uh, they did get to know me quite a bit, and I spent a lot of time on the turf, but it's not totally indicative of how the offensive line played. 
What about the turf? I was out there on the floor. It seemed real slippery to me. Yeah, the middle, in between the hash marks, it was very slippery. And uh, you know, it, I guess the rain out there, and that's a baseball park. It's not a great park to start with. So any rain that it gets makes it very difficult for, you know, footing. And some people wondering why you didn't try and maybe do some more rollouts earlier in the game. It seemed like it took a while to adapt to what the defense was of the 49ers that they were playing against. You came out in the second half, started to roll out, move around a little bit, and we're having some success. Well, we try to shorten up our passing game at halftime, make that strategic move to go to quicker passes, roll out a little bit more, and try to get away from their pass rush. Uh, we went down the opening drive of the third quarter and got a touchdown out of it, and after that, uh, we seemed to lose momentum again. Statistically, not the kind of day that Wade Wilson wanted to put up because things were moving along for you, and your Viking team, but the 49ers made it tough for you, so you end up with 23 of 47 passes for 255 yards, just one touchdown, two interceptions. That was rough. Yeah, it is. Uh, the first interception was really a bad throw. I, a poor decision on my part. Ronnie Lott's uh, an outstanding defensive back, and I tried to squeeze one in there to Allen Rice, and the second one was really trying to get the ball downfield when we were behind. You had to take a couple more chances of a ball I wouldn't ordinarily throw. You said that the crowd really made a difference here in this game, too. It was. Uh, that wasn't a typical San Francisco team or crowd. Usually they're, they're a lot more laid back and don't really get into the game. But uh, from the pregame warm-up all the way through the game, they were very vocal and the, and the team really responded to them. And then we can only say what if. Oh, they're having me change mics here. We can only say what if. If you guys had beaten uh, Green Bay, it would have been a different story? I think so. I think that... Uh, uh, the way we played against the Rams in, in the wild card game, if we could have that same momentum and our same crowd here in the Dome against San Francisco, it might have been a different ball game. Well, it wasn't meant to be, but uh, just proof that we are at Joe Sensors and what's going on here. You know, on David Letterman, they have their thrill cam. Yeah. But we have the grill cam. We're going to take a uh, look back in the let's, grill? Let's take a look at the uh, grill cam here. Here it is. Boy, look at it. Cooking up like mad back here. The busy grill area. Hey, can you guys hear us back there at all? No, it's too busy. I guess that, that grill cam. Well, well, we had anyway, a, uh, a few of the fruits of their labor up here look pretty good, yeah. I'll tell you that. We might have to pick on this a little bit when we go to the commercial break here. Coming up, we're going to meet our special mystery guest. We have the uh, championship matchups to talk about, also some fan feedback. But before we do that, we're going to take a look back at uh, the bitter end of the Viking season through the eyes of photographer editor Brian Augustine. It's 8.48 with Frank and Mike in the morning. Now back in Minneapolis today, it's cloudy with snow flurries possible, a high of 22 and a low of 12. Who's going to win the game? 49ers. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Identified as the new Sonata from Hyundai. With 100 cubic feet of passenger room, it has more space than any other vehicle in its class. And with the most powerful standard engine in its class, it can really take off. The new Sonata from Hyundai. The mid-size car that makes sense. To be perlacious is to be the choicest, the best, to be like a pearl. Martha's Vineyard Restaurant at the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, is the pearl of St. Louis Park, the most perlacious place to be. On Friday night, come to Martha's Vineyard for the unique New Orleans Beef and Seafood Buffet. Saturday night, the Market Fresh Seafood Buffet. Perlacious dining. Perlacious service. Experience the pearl of St. Louis Park. Martha's Vineyard at the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, Highway 12 and County Road 18. Just the key? 
Looks can be deceiving. This is Chrysler's crystal key. The key to everything. It unlocks New Yorker's V6, anti-lock brakes, the most advanced transmission, ultra drive. An abundance of rich Corinthian leather and better owner care than even Rolls or Mercedes. New Yorker's crystal key gives you the one thing you always wanted. Everything. In the pizza delivery game, the Noid can zap ordinary pizzas. But Domino's Pizza delivers more than all the others combined. So when you call Domino's Pizza, you get the best delivered pizza. The Noid just can't beat the best. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Nice to hear some cheering after Sunday, I would imagine. It was, you know, it was a tough, a tough day in San Francisco, so it's nice to get a little welcome here. Well, Wade, uh, it was a weird weekend in San Francisco, but maybe even weirder in Chicago. The fog out there for that game between the Bears and the Eagles is one of the wildest things I've ever seen. We had a crew there covering that game, and this is what it looked like if you were down on the sideline. I've never quite seen fog conditions that uh, terrible. I know we had a scout there at the game sitting in there scouting Chicago or the winter, and he said that from his vantage point, he couldn't even see the field. And if the Vikings would have played in this game, I dare say they wouldn't have much of a chance because you guys really rely on the pass, and you couldn't see what was going on too well out there. That's true, but uh, Randall Cunningham, it didn't really seem to slow him down. He passed for over 400 yards, so he had a big day throwing. Well, the NFC Championship set for next Sunday, 3 o'clock, San Francisco at the Bears. What do you think? It's going to be a tough game. I really think uh, Chicago's tough at home, but I'm picking San Francisco in that game. And in the AFC Championship, we've got the Bills at Cincinnati. You played the Bills in the first game of the year. They've got a very good uh, football team, big pass rush, but I think Cincinnati, since they're playing at home, will come out the winner there. And, of course, that game on TV 11 and 11.30. got to get those plugs in whenever we That's can. right. Let's talk about the Vikings' needs a little bit as you look ahead now. Now that this season's over with, you had a decent year, but you fell short again. You came close, not quite. And I guess from my point of view, you look at some of the deficiencies with the Vikings. Number one, 54 yards rushing is not going to get any team into the Super Bowl. Well, I think that's our main offensive need right now is to get a running game going. Uh, you get a running game going, that's going to make your passing game even that much better. So uh, if we could pick up a running back, maybe that, that would really give us a you know a good shot to maybe move on to that next level. You think a running back is going to be the top pick for the Vikings? Well, I'm not real sure. You know, with the injury of Doug Martin and the, some of the injuries we've had our defensive line, they might be picking you know a defensive lineman maybe in the early rounds. Maybe going for a D lineman because uh, Martin out with the knee injury now and uh, his uh, future in question. That's true. They said one of his uh, you know his surgery was one of the worst that they've ever seen. So it could be a defensive lineman going early this year. How about offensive line after the uh, San Francisco game? Uh, not a lot of time for you to throw the the San Francisco defensive line. We knew they were capable, but we didn't think they were going to give the offensive line as much trouble as they did. Do you think you need some help there? I really don't think so. I think our offensive line's played extremely well all year long, and I think that that's more of a reflection of uh, not having a running game. And if you don't have a contend with a major running game, then they can tee off, and that's going to put pressure on any offensive line. And real quick, only because you're as close to him as anyone else, Tommy Kramer says his future with the Vikings is in doubt. Well, I'm not, you know, I can understand his point of view because of. Uh, what he wants to be playing, he feels like that he can still play, and I, rightfully so. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that that's something that he'll talk up, talk about with management and with Coach Burns. All right, when we come back, we're going to have some fan feedback on the Wade Wilson Show, and we'll be right back after this Super Bowl reminder. with the most features under the sun, but you don't want to pay a price that will burn you in the end. Hey, if it's important to you, it's important to Plymouth. Oh, wow. It's the new Plymouth Sundance with 47 standard features, prices starting at $83.95. Best value in its class and backed by $770 protection. The Plymouth Sundance proves, yet again, the nine most important words Plymouth knows. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. In the pizza delivery game, the Noid can zap ordinary pizzas. But Domino's Pizza delivers more than all the others combined. So when you call Domino's Pizza, you get the best delivered pizza. The Noid just can't beat the best. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. To be perlacious is to be the choicest, the best, to be like a pearl. 
Martha's Vineyard Restaurant at the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, is the pearl of St. Louis Park, the most perlacious place to be. On Friday night, come to Martha's Vineyard for the unique New Orleans beef and seafood buffet. Saturday night, the Market Fresh Seafood Buffet. Perlacious dining. Perlacious service. Experience the pearl of St. Louis Park. Martha's Vineyard at the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, Highway 12 and County Road 18. The Hyundai Excel is the perfect car for the young couple just starting out. It has plenty of cargo space. There's more standard features than any car in its class. And at $54.99, the money you save will give you a start in your financial independence, which should make everyone happy. Hyundai, cars that make sense. Okay, we're back live at the uh, Wade Wilson Show. Joe Sensor's in Roseville, and now it's time for some fan feedback. Going to give some of these Viking fans a chance to talk to the Viking quarterback. And we have a fellow who's been waiting all night long here very patiently. What's your name? Where are you from? Rick Hoffbeck. I'm from Stillwater. What's your question for uh, Wade Wilson? Well, I was always wondered in a big game like this why a team uh, goes out and is so flat. They just don't seem to get anything gelled. Why are the Vikings flat for the big games, Wade? Well, I don't know. I really didn't think we were flat yesterday. I thought that we had a lot of emotion. We had a great week of preparation down in Tucson. Uh, I just think that, that we totally got outplayed. I do admit that we were flat maybe in when we played Green Bay both times, and why that happens, I'm not real sure, but I really don't think that we were flat yesterday. I just think that we were outplayed. Well, uh, what I noticed, too, uh, momentum, a big factor. You came out, and the offense was moving a little bit to begin with, and then Maybe you did get flat as the game went on, but that happens when you're playing a team that's charged up in front of its home crowd. We've got another question here from this guy. What's your name? Where are you from? John Owens, White Bear Lake. And your question for Wade is? I wonder what, uh, what if anything, Wade would change in the offense for next year. Okay, what changes in the Viking offense, Wade? Well, we've addressed that a little bit already. I think that the, our major need right now is to get a little bit of a running game going. I think that we're not going to rely on the running game to be successful in this league, but I think that if we could take some of the burden off our passing game and mix up our run a little bit more, I think that it would make us a lot more balanced. And I think the successful teams that do well in the playoffs seem to have a balanced attack. All right, we've got Viking fans here. We also have a Gopher fan. He's all decked out in Gopher maroon and gold here. What's your name? Where are you from, bud? Jesse Cook. I'm from Venice Heights. You have a question for Wade. Now, what is it? Um, what goes through your mind when you're passing up, when you're passing to Anthony Carter in the end zone? Well, I always feel very fortunate <laughs> if I get a chance to throw the ball to Anthony Carter. We, I know we didn't get a big chance to throw a lot to him uh, this past week in the San Francisco game, but uh, we'd like to get the ball to him as much as possible because he is, I think, one of the top wide receivers in the league. Uh, you know, so that, it's definitely an advantage to ha have somebody like him on your team. All right, we've got a guy here that's kind of sitting and taking it easy and taking it all in. You have a question for Wade. What's your name first? Where are you from? Brad Carr. I'm from Minneapolis. All right, Brad, what do you got for him? I was wondering, uh, in a technical sense, what was the key to the 49ers' success against the Vikings? What did they do? They just seemed to totally dominate the Vikings in every part of the game. Well, I'm not real sure. I don't think they dominated us in all parts of the game. I think that they got momentum going offensively what they did to us as an offense I think that they neglected our running game totally they just told their front four guys to rush the passer they put in extra defensive backs to help take Anthony Carter out of the game they were very successful with them and uh, from there on we just seemed to sputter offensively uh, from the defensive point of view I think that Roger Craig kept us our, our guys Millard and Dolman and those guys from totally pass rushing because they know that he's capable of breaking along at any one time and uh, their offensive line gave Montana a lot of time to throw and uh, just kept us off balance all day. All right, we're going to sneak our way over to the other side, give other people a chance to talk to Viking quarterback Wade Wilson, and we have somebody way back here. Come on back here, this woman in pink. How you doing? What's your name? Where are you from? Mary Hogan, Brooklyn Center. And my question is, why didn't you pass to uh, um, Anthony Carter more? Well, Anthony Carter had such great success against San Francisco last year in the playoffs. That was their number one defensive goal was to try to take him out of the game as much as possible. And they did a, had an outstanding scheme to put him against him. They put extra defensive backs in him and uh, kept two guys around him pretty much for uh, all day long. So we had to try to get the ball to Steve Jordan and Hassan Jones and other people if we were going to be successful. All right, we are, we're getting kind of tangled here. We're going to sneak our way over this way. Have we got enough cord? Lift it all over. This is, this is proof that this place is crowded, folks. Here we are. What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, I'm Diane Arndt from Eden Prairie. And your question for Wade is? <laughs> My question is, when you played for East Texas State, did you ever dream you'd be playing in the, Rose, or the Pro Bowl? Excuse me. 
Well, playing at East Texas State, it was kind of a long way from the Pro Bowl uh, by a long shot. That's a Division II school. Uh, we played in front of an average of about 8,500 people. So uh, my goal back then was just to hopefully get a chance to, to make some NFL roster. Uh, after that, I've been very fortunate. I've worked hard, and I'm just very fortunate to be going to the Pro Bowl this year. It's been a long time for you, too. You've been with the Vikings for how many seasons now? This was uh, number eight. Eight seasons. Eight. You finally get your shot at being a starter, so you put your time in. That's true. I've been in the league eight years, but my body's only taken about a year of punishment, so I feel like I've got a, quite a few years left, I hope. About six months of punishment in San Francisco. I think. <laughs> it seemed like it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, when we come back, we're going to meet our special mystery guest, and this is a guy you won't want to miss. Uh, pretty interesting, Wade. And that's going to be coming up right after this on the Wade Wilson Show, live from Joe Setson. Like I said, this is not a night to be out. So what are we doing here, huh? But seriously, no one's on the road, so stay indoors. Driving is hazardous. Back to you, Jim. Okay, that's a wrap. Oh, come on, let's go. Woo! Let's pack it up. I'm freezing. Okay, we're out of here. The five-passenger Hyundai Excel comes with all-season radial tires and front-wheel drive for sure traction. So it's a great car to be in, even when you don't want to be out. Hyundai, cars that make sense. To be perlacious is to be the choicest, the best, to be like a pearl. Martha's Vineyard Restaurant at the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, is the pearl of St. Louis Park, the most perlacious place to be. On Friday night, come to Martha's Vineyard for the unique New Orleans beef and seafood buffet. Saturday night, the market fresh seafood buffet. Perlacious dining, perlacious service. Experience the pearl of St. Louis Park. Martha's Vineyard at the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, Highway 12 and County Road 18. In the pizza delivery game, the Noid can zap ordinary pizzas. But Domino's Pizza delivers more than all the others combined. So when you call Domino's Pizza, you get the best delivered pizza. The Noid just can't beat the best. Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. You want to move one scout leader, six tenderfoot scouts, over a ton of trailer, and you want to be happy doing it. Hey, if it's important to you, it's important to Plymouth. It's the new Plymouth Voyager, with plenty of room, power, and highest customer satisfaction of American minivans, backed by 770 protection. The front-wheel drive Plymouth Voyager proves, yet again, the nine most important words Plymouth knows. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. <laughs> The second edition of the Wade Wilson Show is back live here at Joe Sensors in Roseville. And uh, I think we should probably talk about the quarterback situation a little bit more for the Vikings because it's been an intriguing year, people trying to make a quarterback controversy, you guys saying there isn't one. I think Tommy Kramer, as I've mentioned before, handled this like a champ. Uh, he came in and uh, won three games for the Vikes, and then it was very frustrating, I'm sure, for him to be uh, watching the game from the sidelines, but he basically has kind of kept to himself and not said a lot, and uh, you guys seem to have a relationship that has continued. Oh, yeah, Tommy and I get along fine. Uh, you know, we're both very competitive right now, and both of us naturally like to be leading this team. Uh, unfortunately, only one guy can play quarterback, so I anticipate a meeting between him and management and me and management also to find out exactly what the situation is because, uh, you know, I'm at the point now where I'd like to keep on starting, and Tommy, I'm, I feel sure, feels like he can keep on starting, if not here somewhere else, or either one of us. Would you be surprised to see Tommy Kramer leave for next year or even yourself? Well, I'm not real sure. I know that the that the club would like to keep us both here because we're both very capable of, of uh, playing quarterback here. So uh, you have to throw in the development of Rich Gannon. So it, it'll be an interesting offseason, I feel sure. Ray does radio, uh, radio for KDWB. I'm on KQ. And KQ92 uh, had a uh, Wade look-alike contest out here the other night. <laughs> and so there's another guy out there that thinks he can be a Viking quarterback because he looks like you. This contest <laughs> had a lot of people out here at Joe Sensors last Thursday night. And uh, they had a bunch of contestants, and I got to tell you that a few of them did look like you. And then again, some of them didn't, except for maybe a familiar number and a jersey. And uh, it drew a pretty good crowd. Uh, but uh, believe it or not, we do have somebody here on hand with us. And uh, here he is, folks, uh, Wade Wilson, the second winner of the Wade Wilson Lookalike Contest. His name, his name is Dave Arndt. Of Roseville, and Dave, you aren't anything like Wade Wilson. I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> Sorry, I tried my best. <laughs> you won a trip to the Super Bowl out of this deal. Yeah, that was great. It's more than I got, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll swap you a trip for, uh, to the Super Bowl for Hawaii. That's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pro Bowl. Maybe we should send him over to the Pro Bowl yeah. and see how many people mistake him for you. I guess there's a little bit of a likeness yeah. there when you look yeah, at the two so. of them. Yeah. Does he look like Wade? Can you say that's true? With that's a, true. That's true with a Texas yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Did you play football uh, in high school, college, anything like that? Uh, no, I didn't. Basketball. Basketball. Yeah. You're a big Viking fan, though. Yes, I am. For 24 be, years now. Oh, man. Had to be tough watching that game on Sunday. Yeah. It hurt. It really did. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, I'm going to get out of town and maybe people blame the loss on him instead yeah. of me. You can start hanging around at Winter Park, going to a few meetings. I'm getting a little afraid walking down the street. You Have know? you ever uh, bumped into Bob Schnelker or anyone? <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not yet. Well, uh, Wade uh, the second, turn around real quick. Look at the jersey we made up for this guy, just to make sure nobody mistook him for Wade Wilson. <laughs> there it is. Wilson with the question mark. That's pretty good. You get to keep that jersey, all right? All right, thanks. Hey, thanks for coming on with us, and uh, congratulations. Congratulations on your trip to the Super Bowl. I appreciate it. That's you great. got anything you want to ask, Wade? Um, <laughs> we yeah, I mean, why, did, why did fate deal him that tough hand? <laughs> <laughs> like me, huh? Maybe we should ask you what happened at San Francisco. Uh, the, uh, first of all, I, I think, you know, San Francisco played an unbelievable game. They were on top of their game at every facet of the game. And the other thing was... Uh, Look at lack of running game. You look at all the the teams that are in the final, the the the, set, the finals. You look at Cincinnati. You got Buffalo. You got Chicago and San Francisco. All the top four running teams in both leagues kind of points to a, a you know a deficiency in the in the, what the Vikings don't have. I guess that's the biggest thing I'd point to. Yeah, and if you look at the situation too, there are uh, three of the four teams are teams that the Vikings played very tough this year. You should have won the game at Buffalo if you got a couple of breaks. Yep. Uh, you beat. Well, you had San Francisco beat before Steve Young staggered right. his way into the end yeah. zone some 50 yards. You right. uh, did well against the Bears. Yeah, beat the Bears three times. So we feel like you know, we're one of the elite teams in the league. We just got to find something that will put us over the top. And you got nine guys going to the Pro Bowl, so the football yeah. season over isn't over, especially for you. No, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be a good trip over to Hawaii. I'm anxious to, you know, to get over there. And then after, after the Pro Bowl game's over with, my wife and I are going to spend a little, a little extra time over there just for rest and relaxation. A little bit of vacation, huh? Yeah, I'm going to spend a little time over there, lay in the sun and maybe hit a golf ball or two. Okay, so Wade's going to be hanging around and helping us out with our Super Bowl coverage since we're the Super Bowl station. We'll be hearing from you again, I believe, this weekend and on up to the Super Bowl and then maybe even chasing you out to that Pro Bowl, too. All right, I'm looking forward to it. I wish I could go along with you. You yeah, got a big suitcase? Along. Yeah, come along. Let's go. It'll be a good time. Maybe I should grab the jersey off of Dave. And <laughs> he can go down to Miami to the Super Bowl, and uh, we can go out to Honolulu with you. you got all your teammates going out there. Are you all going together now? No, I think everybody's going from their own respective homes. I know we're going to be leaving from Dallas, and uh, you know different guys will be leaving from their homes. So, uh, to make it clear, you, you don't live here in the offseason? No, I'm uh, moving back to Dallas probably this weekend or as soon as I can get my wife in the box is ready to go. And I kind of found it interesting. You work out with Steve Pelluer down there, see, the uh, Dallas quarterback. I see quite a few of the Cowboys that we work out together down there quite a bit. And, you know, it's good to have guys that, you know, that you can work out with down there. Now, uh, when you head off to Honolulu, uh, are you more concerned about that game? I, I would imagine you want to make a real good showing, but this game is kind of uh, anticlimactic after the Super Bowl. It is, but anytime you play, you always want to put on a good show. But it'll be very interesting to get a chance to see and meet all the, all the guys that you play against all the time. So I'm, that's a part of it. I'm looking forward to the most. And how about the rest of your teammates now? Uh, anything uh, said after that loss? Uh, anybody going to do anything interesting or unusual in the offseason? I haven't really heard. I heard Walker Lee Ashley maybe going to open up a submarine uh, sandwich shop somewhere out east. I guess that compete with David Howard's fish shop. But other than that, I don't know what's going on. Well, that'll be interesting to see where that goes to, too. It's nice to see guys doing something off the football field yep. as well. Yeah. All right, Wade Wilson, thank you very much for this edition of the Wade Wilson Show. And again, Wade will be joining us with uh, his expert analysis throughout the Super Bowl here on the Super Bowl Station TV 11. Thanks a lot, too, to you, Dave, aren't the Wade Wilson look like winner? <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Just glad to be on. That's going to do it for this Tuesday night live at Joe's Sensors in Roseville, and we thank you for joining us. And uh, Wade will be catching you throughout the Super Bowl. All right, sounds good. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Wilson Show was brought to you in part by your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealer and by Martha's Vineyard in the Holiday Inn, Minneapolis West, Highway 12 and County Road 18. 
And by Domino's Pizza. Nobody delivers better. And by your local Hyundai dealer. Diet Coke presents famous Viking conquests. Nothing tackles the Viking size thirst like Diet Coke. The real cola taste you can drink more of because it's just one calorie. It's the taste that quenches a Viking's thirst. Just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. When the person who doctors the family gets a cough and cold, everyone suffers. Mom, someone took my sleeve. I earned it myself. Now Dad's ironing your clothes, Mom. Time to doctor that cough with Robitussin. Because more doctors and pharmacists recommend Robitussin than any other cough medicine. Look, Mom's feeling better. Uh-oh. Robitussin, recommended by Dr. Mom. Which Robitussin is right for you? Ask your doctor or pharmacist. Hey kids, wintry mornings with lots of snow means that your school might close for the day. That's when you should turn to Snowbird Alert on News 11 Sunrise Show. Meteorologist Sunny House will tell you if your school is closing or starting late due to the winter storms. Your school can be part of News 11's Snowbird Alert.